Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here today. We're playing here well we're not quite playing it, are we? We're going to be looking at the change log for the young update. So then like uh the other ones, I'm just going to talk about almost every single change in the uh young build, the latest update, and um what is it? Just a warning, this might be a very boring video, so click off now if you don't want to be bored to out of your freaking mind. But for those who want to hear all the up, uh, changes that were implemented into Heroes and Generals after the Young build, then keep on watching. So, like I said, like the other uh, changelog updates, I'm just going to be talking about all the changes added and show you what has been added. But if it's like in the action game, I may or may not freaking edit it in. Uh, it depends. Anyways, first off, in the action game, we have a whole new game mode called Encounter, which uh, is basically a King of the Hill kind of style of game mode. It has one point in the middle and two, two factions face off uh, in the new map called Depot. Yeah. They changed their um, game engine just for this map to support trenches, which is actually really fun. I like playing in it, and um, I'll bring you guys some gameplay of that later. Other than that, they've added spawn protection zones to the encounter and skirmish maps. So basically, you just spawn in a ghost mode, and there's a certain area around your spawn points in which, uh, if you step outside of it, shoot within it, or well, that's it. Then, uh, you'll be taken out of ghost mode and can be killed. And any enemies that step inside your spawn protection area will be stripped of all their weapons and just run around like freaking fools. Next up, uh, they've changed a bunch of crap to the town map. You can check out the change log yourself, I'll put it in the description. But just know, they've changed a lot of things. They fixed an exploit that players could jump through roofs. Fixed the issue that soldiers could glitch through angled surfaces. Mm, that's pretty much it for the action game. Uh, regarding weapons, vehicles, and skins, they have added the new Soviet PPS 43, which will be shown, which is here. Yep. I've almost got it, so I'll definitely just get it when I can. That'll be fun. I actually played with it a bit already. It's actually really interesting. But it's something I really think they should have done to uh, balance it out between the PPSH and PPD-40 is they should have made it cost less equipment points because in real life it was lighter than the PPD and the PPSH. But whatever, Rito. That's fine. Next up they added the new United States M1A1 carbine which is right here. I was actually avail able to buy it right um, when the update came out, so there it is. Looks a little bit lighter, like the uh, as Birchwood. What is it? Birchwood camo on it. Where's the gun that can do that? The freak. Where'd it go? Um, maybe from a recon. Yeah, it looks like it has that camo on it. And it's actually not just the reskin. The uh, iron sights were changed, and the uh, and unlike the PPS, it actually costs less equipment points, so you could take grenades or pistol or whatever with you into the battlefield. Plus, they moved the iron sights away from your face, so it's not freaking taking up your whole screen, unlike the M1 carbine. So I actually like the M1A1 better. Now, they um. No, I'll talk about that later. They also added the new German motorcycle, the Kettenkraftfahrzeug HK101 German light tractor. It's basically a motorcycle, except it's has a uh, tracks on the end of it. I'll show you that if I can. There you go. <laughs> It also has the ability to carry a supply crate and 
uh, I think four other comrades with you. Yeah, I think four other comrades with you. So that's really interesting. Mm. Next up, there are changes to the M3 grease gun. Uh, in case you don't know, it's this weapon. They've updated the rate of fire to increase it. Uh, closer range damage has been increased, and the muscle velocity velocity has been increased to about 285 meters per second. Basically, the bullets go faster. Changes to the M1 Grand it has better precision when fast firing, so I think that's where is it? Stability has been increased, basically. All handguns recoil animations when aiming has been updated to lessen view when blocking. So, I guess they moved it away from your face. <laughs> Fix scoping issues under certain lighting conditions. Fix the too dark scope with HDR turned off. It's now the same as when HDR is turned on. Flix bl fixed black flickering border around thick reticule segments. Fix flickering issue when reloading the AVS in precision mode. So it fixed the reloading animation when you, uh, you're reloading the AVS while in when you're aiming down sights. There are new weapon skins to the M1 A1 carbine. The newly added uh, paratrooper weapon. Yeah. They've added all a uh, skin called Alderwood to the Giver 43, or as I like to call it, the Jewer 43. Where is it? Got to my nose. Uh, Alder. Oh, that actually looks really nice. Hmm. To the PPS 43, they've added the Factory, Anodized Black, Army Paints, and Camouflage A skins to it. I'll be sure to show you guys that in the PPS 43 review, AA. And to the Mosinogans, they've added the Patriotic Field Camo. Holy crap! The PFC Stencil, the PFC Chalk, and the PFC Birch. So basically, Patriotic Field Camo. Oh, 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 oh. Oh ho ho, I must get this. Oh ho ho. Mm. Mm. I haven't seen that before. <laughs> Amazing. They've added new reload shot and reload sounds to the M1917 revolver. Mm. This piece of crap. They've added new shot and reload sounds to the P08 Parabellum. This weapon. They've added new reload sounds to the M1 M2 carbine rifle. So, uh, the freaking automatic carbine. This. They fixed the issue that camera would clip in the machine gun when aiming upwards in the Bobic. So, it's the armored car that the recons get. They've adjusted the Stug 3G armor values down to reflect the realistic values. So, they won't be able to just eat up shots anymore. I hope, at least, because that's freaking ridiculous. The vehicle crates have new textures and decals showing content. There are new vehicle skins. That's another feature they added. The first vehicle skins. So, here they've added the olive drab and black. Oh, holy crap! Why is it so expensive? Ew! Anyways, <laughs> also a new better looking factory skin for this, the default one. New better looking factory skin for the gas. This, and the new Fazuga light skin. Hmm, that's interesting. Still expensive as hell. New better looking factory skin to the Kubelswagen. I know it's Kubelswagen, I like calling it the Kubelswagen. And the uh, ambush DB skin, so you can hide in the bushes like little freaking rats. Anyways, they've added uh, new skins to the Ketzenkrad HK101. K101. 
Ketting Craft Trod. Jeez. New Factory Skin, the Ambush DB Skin that you saw earlier, and the Light Olive Skin. They fixed missing hatch colliders on the BT-7, the T-3045, and IS-2. They fixed stuckage problems for T-38, so I guess it gets stuck less. <laughs> um, civilian truck wheels no longer clip through the vehicle when driving over obstacles. They fixed the Tiger 2 animation, the tracks could come through the side skirt. The Kubel the Spike and Smoke now correctly comes from the engine. And uh, they added in-game icon for bicycles and civilian trucks. Basically looks like this, except with its circle in the middle. For character movement, when going prone, uh, proning is now possible in previously non-pronable areas. Uh, prone, when you're going prone, you crawl faster. All right. For sprinting, sprinting always boosts character speed, and you can easily more easily force uphill terrain. Before when you're like running up mountains, it would, you just go the same speed as you, if you were walking. Blending from run to sprint to aim and vice versa is a lot more smooth, and the sprint stamina cost is reduced. Sprinting no longer uh, sprinting longer before fatigued. For the general character mechanics, they remove the stamina cost when jumping, but regenerating stamina when jumping is paused. You can now shoot when in the sliding state, such as slipping down from slopes and roofs. Toggle precision aiming is now more solid, reducing the number of times players with toggled aiming is forced out of aiming. Weapon animations have been updated. No specific uh, weapons listed. A fixed in-game map, map animation, it now has arm restraints in vehicles. Fixed driver animations and pre pressing control in an APC and fixed wrong binocular animation shown when switching from aim to mode to binoculars. Some other stuff, they fixed the spawn... no, they redid the spawn menu. Uh, ghost mode, I already talked about that. Matchmaker improvements to stop players entering battles that are ending. Squads are locked for new players when they only have access to 40 lives for infantry type squads and 20 for other types. Matches are locked when the last losing faction has under 50 lives left. For the deploy queue, now triggered AT player difference to, of 1 instead of 2. Now lower limits set to 50% down from 70% of full server. You want. Deploy queue disabled when match is locked. Action server part of the un- wait. Basically, there's a uh, underdog bonus now, so say if you have less players on your uh, war faction, or if you have less players, then you gain more XP or more ribbons al alongside with the ones already gained. New on screen effects have been added, such as when you're being damaged, there's cam shake, blood, and uh, other post effects. For explosions, there's camera shake, vignette, and post other post effects. There's now a um, water explosion effect, basically camera shake and water droplets and all that. On bullet impact onto dirt and uh, other stuff. Dirt and um, I guess a uh, kind of black border around your screen is uh, there. When impacting water, there are water droplets. And when you're invisible, there's desaturation and the screen is darkened. And when in a protected area, you, the screen is glowing and brightened. Clouds improve to look better, especially on low settings. Fix weapon invisibility during camera zoom sequence and spawning. And that's pretty much it for the uh, action game. For the strategy game, they've added the underdog bonus. The current underdog bonus is shown when the player chooses the faction. The current underdog bonus is now displayed next to each faction in the battle briefing window. Show you that if it loads. There we go. These things. H two O. What else? 
change how bonuses are added to XP, ribbons, credits, and more funds. They are now based on base value and then added together. What else? Well... There's a whole bunch of other stuff, but... You can look over that, since I don't deem it to be very interesting. So, for the soldier overview, what you're looking at right now, the user interface has been updated. There's new UI, look, and feel. So, everything has been redone. Again. God dang it. Mm -hmm. Upcoming command points unlock now show percentage progression. So, for example, this. Yeah. Soldier renaming and tier information is now found on soldier screen instead of hidden away. It's all right here. Um, upcoming, well, upcoming command point unlocks are no longer visible for level, level 17 non-general characters, since they can't get the unlock unless they change the general. Selecting and finding soldiers has been revamped. Now a scrollable list in the left side of the soldier screen with filter options, so you can filter which country or which kind of soldier you want to see. That's interesting. Hmm. Rank unlock windows now show the soldier's new base salary. When down here, I guess. The, char the character career tree has been replaced by a much simpler component that simply displays the career choices currently available for the soldier, right here, instead of that big like, instead of this being displayed on the screen the whole time. Mm. Buying veteran membership now immediately unlocks slot 4, and you will be able to equip weapons in it without reopening the window. Ribbon experience changes. They've added rank XP for encounter battles won, added rank XP for capture point neutralize, added rank XP for repairing own vehicle and other player's vehicle, minor bonus for repairing your own, and major for repairing others. Added rank XP for stealing vehicles, added rank XP for players spawning in players' vehicles, uh, they've added rank XP for players using infantry support crates, they've added rank XP for killing while capturing, Added XP to Battler Ribbon, Battle Ribbon, for Encounters Game Mode. We've added XP to Recon Ribbon for stealing Recon Vehicles. Added XP to Driver Ribbons for stealing Jeeps and Motorcycles. Added XP to Chauffeur Ribbon for stealing a APCs. Added XP to Tank Driver Ribbon for stealing tanks. Added XP to Tactical Bomber for stealing planes. Added XP to all vehicle special specialist ribbons for repair. Added XP for all vehicle specialist ribbons for use of supply crates. And they've added XP to APC specialist ribbons when players deploy using the APC. Increased XP bonus on parachute ribbon drivers. What? They've adjusted the soldier salaries. Now killing, uh, not including long distance, is down 15%. Uh, added adjusted soldier salaries again, and you get 20% more for capturing. Increased credit price on uniforms. Ah, come on. Boo! Is this more expensive? Yeah, it's more expensive. God dang it. Nine! Hmm. Introduction for other, the other tab, the introduction of tier 0 for players who are just starting out in the game, i.e. the maximum rank of characters is 1. Tier 1 is now applicable to players with maximum rank on, on their characters being 2 and above, but less than 5. Tier 2 is now applicable to players with maximum rank on their characters being 5 and above. Uh, right, a bunch of stuff is just aesthetic. So that's mostly it. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Hope I didn't bore you guys to death. 
and uh, well, I'll know if you're still watching. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the battlefield, comrades. Hopefully with the PPS.